you guys this is my fifth video and as you can see I changed up the scenery a little bit I am in my living room instead of in front of my bookshelf and there's like a reason for that um I feel like if I'm in my room I will not be doing this video I will probably be in my bed wrapped up in my blanket hugging my dog my stuffed dog and probably crying or feeling depressed or whatever over some events that happened recently that I really do not want to talk about because I am trying not to be depressed anymore. So I thought I'd kickstart this video by being in a new setting almost and just talking to you guys. Just, this is a talk video and of course I'm going to give you your book recommendation but you know this video is not going to be that long and it's just something for me to do to kind of vent and to get some things off my mind especially on a topic that I think will be very important for people to you know really think about okay so the book recommendation it's on my phone and it's a really good book I've read it like twice and I love it I love it so much it is a really good book and I have recommended it to a couple of my friends and they read it and they liked it and for some reason I thought this would be an appropriate book because lately I've been obsessed with like assassins and killers and everything so I thought this would be like a very appropriate book <laughs> okay so let me find it do, 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 do. I have a lot of books in this library it's ridiculous Eh, where is it? I had it earlier. Where? Okay, it's Dear Killer by Catherine Ewell. 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 It's E W E L L. But it's a really good book. It's called Dear Killer, and it's about this girl who uh, is a killer for hire, and she kills people. And she is like a role model, because. Ha! Huh. But the ending, though, the ending of the book makes me upset. Makes me upset so badly. I read it twice, and it's really good, and people should read it, okay? So, I'm not going to show it to you because my phone, it's, as you can see, charging horribly with the weird, crapped-up charger. So, um, eh, eh. Okay, so the topic for this video is kind of being yourself. And looking at the good and the bad, uh, I always I want to do this video because I feel like it can help me and also probably help others who might have things going on with them, self-esteem, depression, just eternal sadness or whatever, because I have it. I will put that out there right now. I am depressed. I've been to doctors and therapists and counselors. I have grown up with not the best childhood. Not all glitz and glamour and beautiful ponies and not all dark and sadness either. It's a good mixture, but sometimes the sadness kind of likes to take over the glitter. Even though I hate glitter. Glitter is so girly. Okay, but um, yeah, and I've been getting better and I've been improving myself and I find out things about myself that I didn't really recognize. And just yesterday, before a terrible event happened, I'm not going to talk about it. Okay, but I was going through my old journals from middle school and elementary school. You know those Coke or Pepsi books you would buy from the book fair? I found those and I was going through them and I realized I was so happy in elementary school. And in middle school, it kind of faded. I mean, I saw this one page in one journal that really, really got me. It was from sixth grade. I think it was before things started to go bad for me, before the depression and everything like that um, started, you know, in small stages. Because, like, there was a question in this Coca Pepsi journal that I had. And I was like, what do you look forward to in the future? And sixth grade me wrote... When I turned 16, so I could get my learner's permit. When I turned 16, 
I didn't even think about getting my learner's permit. I didn't want to. I didn't want to drive. Part of me was that feeling like, oh, I don't want to hit another car by accident and get sued by some psycho person. And another part of me was just because I didn't want to because of depression. I've also battled some very bad self-esteem things. Oh, I'm fat. I'm very short. I'm ugly. You know, things like that. And over the years, and especially in the past few months and everything, trying to get better, working, I realized I'm pretty. I'm not entirely ugly. I mean, there might be some ugly things about me, maybe personality-wise, or maybe I have a huge zit on my forehead and that makes me feel ugly. But I'm pretty, and people think I'm adorable. That word kind of makes me cringe, though, because I hear it so often, like, oh my gosh, you're so adorable. You're so cute, and I just and it just makes me cringe a little bit. Like, eh. I like going in a hole. Like, I'm not adorable. Ew, I'm not adorable. I'm not cute. Then my friends like, you are, you are, you're adorable. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm evil. I'm evil. I'm bad to the bone. I will kill you. And then I think when I say that, they see a chibi character talking to them, and they're just like, oh. Okay, I'm not fat. I've been a vegetarian for a year and I lost a lot of weight. I might be slightly overweight for a girl my age and size, even though I kind of manage that, but that kind of, you know, teeters. Because, you know, when I'm on my good days, I'm eating my vegetables, my fruit, and everything, I'm 145 pounds. But when I have my bad days and I'm all cookies and cakes and pies and chocolates, oh, chocolate, I'm fat and I gain like. To 150, but it teeter, it teeters, it teeter totters. Sometimes I'm 149 or 148 or I'm 151, and I'm okay. Huh. So um, yeah, I've been battling some real issues, and I feel like I'm getting better. I feel it. I feel great. Yes, there will be that moment where I feel totally sad and depressed and just want to die. But then there are those moments where I feel just totally happy. Not like totally, totally happy, like I could go and hug everybody in the world and be so amazing and cool and want to talk to everybody. You must think I'm someone from Gilmore Girl or Gossip Girl or Glee if you think that is ever going to happen. So, yes, I'm getting better and I want to tell some people out there because I've met people and I've had some friends who have self-esteem issues who feel like they're not pretty, who feel like they can die, who get so upset and depressed because their boyfriend broke up with them and over something stupid. Or they had an argument with their boyfriend or girlfriend over something stupid, over something that could have been communicated and just fixed. And whatever, let me give you a little, little something. And I just learned this you know, yesterday. Relationships suck, okay? We're 17, we're 16, we're 15, we're 14, we're 18. We're not in college, we're not grown, we don't have jobs, we're barely out of high school. I still got a year left. Relationships suck, and they will suck, and you will have your problems, but now that I think about it, it's okay. I mean, yes, it hurts a lot when someone betrays you, Yes, it hurts a lot when someone shares your personal business. Yes, it hurts a lot when they won't understand where you come from or what you're trying to say or what you're trying to do. And they won't understand that you're being normal. You're being you and just everything. Like, come on now. Come on. Just understand each other. It's no big deal, but hey. There are boys out there who can be stupid, and there are girls out there who can be bougie. Oh, God, I hate that word. (laughs) Bougie. Ew, so gross. Bougie is just a, a, a nasty, nasty word. I hate it. I hate it so, so much. I just... Yeah, but I hate those girls who are all about makeup, all about how they look, trying to impress people. Trust me, you don't need to impress anybody. You really, really don't. 
and I hate, I have the one friend who was like, how do I look? What should I say to him? Oh my gosh, he just said, hey, what should I say back? And blah, blah, blah. Or I can do that. You know, have you seen me? I'm not pretty. But then when you look at them, like, oh my gosh, you are pretty. You have an amazing sense of style. You're super cool. You can dance. You're funny. And yes, there are those times where I want to punch you in the face, but you're a cool person. Why can't you see that? And you don't need a boy to pay you so much attention. If anything, I want a girl to pay me so much attention. I want a people to notice me for who I am and see that I'm a cool person. Not because I'm wearing these cool clothes, I have on a ton of makeup, and I act like I just walked out of the Jersey Shore. Like, are you are you kidding me? Are you are you are you completely kidding me? So why is it that some people can't see who they are? And some people can't notice so many good things in the other person, even if you see the bad. I think some really good qualities for people to have about for just for them is to be trustworthy, to give the right amount of trust. And also when people give you trust, keep their secrets, protect them, treat them how they should be treated. Be honest with yourself and honest with others. You have to accept who you are. Why do you people think I admire? I admire lesbians. I admire gays. I admire bisexual people. I admire transgender people or trans people, you know, because they're human. And they accept who they are. It's just so amazing and beautiful. It makes me want to cry. And I don't want to right now, but I feel tears welling up and I don't want to cry. But, and I accept who I am. I am not perfect. I can be crazy. Occasionally. Sometimes. Most of the time. But I'm not crazy crazy. Like, I'm not gonna show up at your house on your doorstep and kill your whole family. I'm not gonna come running down to wherever you are with a boombox in my head, in my hand, begging you to take me back. I'm not gonna rush out to the mall and buy all the latest stuff so this guy or this person can notice me and think I'm so fantastic and white. Mm -hmm. Just acting like that makes me want to slap myself. It makes me want to slap myself. Put my hand down. I mean, I'm mad as the Mad Hatter. I have a kooky sense of humor. I can be funny even when I'm not trying to be funny. And then when I try to be funny, I'm not funny. I have amazing sense of style in my guess. I mean, wearing anime shirts is cool. (laughs) At least to me. If you don't rock an anime shirt, just... uh, uh, Any... Any otakus, weebs, any of y'all out there who can rock your anime shirt with pride? Oh, hallelujah. I I really, I really just think that more people should be more open. And also, really look inside yourself. I spent two weeks looking inside myself, writing, reliving, going back and looking at my past and being like, ha, ha, ha. Or being like, oh, I was so sad during that time. Wait, why? Why was I? And sometimes it, it feels good to make yourself feel a bit feel better. Something bad happened to me. And I talked to a couple of people, told them what happened. I cried. I cried for the longest amount of time. I woke up this morning and I cried. I was crying last night. But now I got my hair washed, feels good, I ate, I ordered some things off of Amazon, even though Prime Day is looking like a very disapp- a very big disappointment right now, I mean like deals, I couldn't even find the book deals, man, I was hoping to get a book for half off and like more deals than Black Friday, yeah, I didn't see any, so I still ordered some stuff off of Amazon, some really good stuff, some really good cheap stuff that probably would have been expensive if I got it in the store. Anyway, so, I mean, I'm just being me, and I feel, I, in a way, I feel better. 
I feel somewhat better. Sure, I'm going to be sad. My heart's going to hurt. And yes, I will cry maybe once or twice in the next few days just thinking about it. I will get angry. I might feel depressed again. But I'm going to pick myself back up. I mean, I've dealt with stuff like this before. And who knows, maybe I do need this long, long break just to help me be a better me, to be the best me I can be. When I was little, I used to love fashion design. I used to love going out and doing stuff. I used to love shopping so much with my friends. I would try to have a sleepover every other weekend just so we could like have mini fashion shows and make pancakes in the morning and watch movies and get fat off of popcorn and cookies and soda. Now, my last sleepover was like a few weeks ago <laughs> and it wore me out. I was like, oh my gosh, no offense to my friends, but I was like, I'm glad they left. I'm still trying to get my score back on the Michael Jackson Wii game for Thriller because one of my friends got five stars and beat my high score and it pisses me off so bad. But I love her though. I love her. She's she's like a second mom, a better mom, but <sighs> I'm working on stories. I have improved in my writing. I'm kicking the laziness out of me because... I can be very lazy and I procrastinate and I really need to work on these summer assignments, but homework kills trees. Okay. So, uh, okay. But I, to all those who are depressed, to everyone who doesn't feel like themselves, to everyone who has cried all night and don't know why, to everyone who gets upset or mad because someone won't accept you for who you are or understand you or get where you're coming from or try and help you see the better things in life or anything, this is my message to you. Screw those people. Screw them. Don't kill them. Don't be like that guy from, I don't know if that was North Carolina or South Carolina. It was in one of the Carolinas in, who shot up a church. Don't be like him. But I mean, try and find something that make you feel good that make you feel better. If you have to wear your Pierce the Veil t-shirt and get a bunch of piercings in your ear and that makes you feel good and better, do it. If you are a trans person or gay and you think you will feel better coming out to your parents, your friends, or whoever, do it. Do it. Go through your transformation. Do it. If you think that you are just feeling so horrible because someone broke your heart, and you don't know what will happen next. It's okay to take a break. It is okay to take that nice long break. Because you might look back at it and you might laugh. Like I did with my journals yesterday. I mean, Tender Kisses by Tracy Spencer. What was I thinking in fifth grade? <laughs> uh, you might laugh. You might cry. I don't know. I just look at it as an example for the future. Like, oh, so this is what not to do. I won't tell all my business to this person. I won't, you know, stop talking to them for several weeks and then tell them I just wanted a break. Maybe I won't uh, say certain words because they might think I'm getting all moody or have a tone or whatever. You know, it's just something to make me feel better. So you know what I did to make myself feel better? I got my hair done. I ate a whole Subway sandwich. I'm fat, yes. I watched anime. Uh, Akame got kill. It's killing it right now. It's killing it. I'm going to work on some stories. I'm going to pack for this family reunion that I leave for tomorrow. Wish me luck being around my family. Oh, it's exhausting. It's more exhausting than having a sleepover with your friends. Yeah. Next week, I go back to the cat adoption room and I get to volunteer with my little kittens and take care of them. They're so cute. You know, and I'm just going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. And maybe someday I'll find that partner, that love, that friend 
who is all of that in one. But relationships suck. They suck when you're a teenager. That's why young love doesn't exist. Or it shouldn't exist. I don't know. But hey, be yourself. We are who we are. And it's just us. We just need to accept it. We need to accept who we are. And accept what people think. I used to not give a crap what people think. And sometimes I have that moment like, oh, really? They think that way about me? But now that I think about it, I'm just like, I really don't care. And I shouldn't care. Because I'm a strong, independent girl. Growing into a strong, independent woman. And hmm, hopefully I will find my partner in the near future. My love, my heart. I mean, that's why I write romance books because this one romance book I'm working on called Life of Me on Wattpad, some of the dates I put in there for my two main characters, Sebastian and Erica, kind of is what I want in the future. Like that love, that friend, that weird relationship that started off kind of weird but grew into something beautiful and I'm working on it. I have to post updates and everything, but uh I'll have something to work on on this family reunion. So when they think I'm texting on my phone, I'm writing that story. <laughs> but um, yeah, so ending message, don't give a crap. Screw people who hate you and be yourself. Even if you're sad, even if you're depressed, even if you have to be on medication or they think you're crazy, you're not. You're you. And being you is the best thing you can be. So... That is my little talk video, and doing this kind of also helps myself. <sighs> my hair looks a mess. I bet it does. Even though I got it done, it's all over the place, which is kind of what I hate about getting my hair done. It'd be all over the place now. It's just, uh, my hair is a mess. So, I have a lot of hair. But, um, that concludes my video. Hopefully, it wasn't so long. And, um, oh, before I forget, and here's the reason why I kind of talked about relationships so much besides my own, I finished Becoming Us, the episode for Monday, and Danielle and Ben broke up, and Brooke and Aton broke up. Why are so many breakups happening this week? <laughs> why? Next thing you know, Lathan might get a girlfriend or boy or a girlfriend and break up with her. That's why I hate summer. It's all about love. And it's all about heartbreak. And it just makes me want to punch producers in the face. And punch myself in the face. And punch everybody in the face. Why do I want to punch people in the face? This is so wrong! God! That was my anger, and it came out wrongly. I'm sorry to all my viewers. But I thank my friends who were there for me when I vented and cried. And, you know... I'm a little upset because my mom ate the last of the cookies and cream ice cream. Now I gotta buy freaking more! I am sorry. That was the crazy anger that came out of me. But it's who I am, so... And I'm serious. When it comes to my cookies and cream ice cream, Oreos are life, man. Oreos. If you read Simon vs. the Homo Sapien Agenda, or if you ever talk to Becky Albertalli, she understands that Oreos have some meaning to them. And especially in that cookies and I cookies and cream ice cream, though. Oh. So, uh, books to obsess over, I really don't have any. And TV shows, I'm a little peeved at Becoming Us. It just, it just went off on my DVR, and I'm just... <laughs> I want to cry, man. I don't want to cry, but I just want to just. <clears throat> I can't wait. No, wait till next week. But uh, that's my video. And next time, hopefully, you'll see me in my bedroom, and I won't be wrapped up in a blanket holding my dog or my stuffed cat, even though I want a real cat. Okay, I need to stop talking. Oh, and if you try and look in the background, don't look too long, please, because it's so weird being in the living room, but it's so refreshing at the same time. Alright, so that's my video, and I hope you enjoyed it, or at least felt good watching it, or just supported me by watching it. 
Uh, and I will see you guys later. Peace out. Books are life. Don't forget to read Dear Killer. Read it. Unless you're an assassin yourself. Don't read it.